Welcome everyone to our daily Forex market analysis call. This is in preparation for trading on September 6th, 2017. Just a quick disclaimer before we get started. This is for educational purposes only. Trading is a risky business, so please be careful with your money. And if you have questions about your individual investment needs, I recommend you talk to your investment advisor. So let's start off by taking a look at our calendar as usual. So one of the things that um, was the theme for today was that there were a lot of FOMC members who spoke. Um, so this is, this is a big central bank week. Um, keeping that in mind, anything that comes out from out from any of the central bankers will have uh, a big impact on the market. So as we started off with the first Baynard, I think it was the first one to speak, and he essentially said that we need to wait and see um, and before we actually go on and, um, uh, and do further monetary policy tightening. So that was his message essentially. So what the market took from that was that we're likely not to see a hike in September, maybe in December, but it is not... Um, it is not really, you know, not a strong uh, sentiment in the market that we are going to see another rate hike. So following that, we had Kaplan and we had another FOMC member. Essentially, pretty much everybody came and said that they want to wait and see how um, how things go before they start raising rates. So that's what... Um, um, so that's what's going on at the moment. So Kaplan is of the opinion that we should do some monetary policy com um, or we should at least reduce the balance sheet so that in case the central bank needs to or Fed needs to do something else in the future, we'll, they'll be able to manage that. But at this point, essentially, they're all saying we're going to, um, they want to wait and see before raising rates. So he said, he said that we may still raise rates this year, but he wants to wait and see. So that was the message. And as a result of that, we um, saw a negative impact on the US dollar. So that's usually what happens. Um, Aussie as well, we had Aussie RBA, uh, Governor Lau speaking. And, um, and we also had the cash rate statement here. So essentially as a result of that, basically what they said was that they're going to keep the interest rate steady. They're not going to increase it at this point. Um, so they left the cash rate unchanged. Um, so they're saying economy is improving, labor markets are tightened further, and they're looking for growth. So they're concerned about wage growth. They're concerned about um, inflation. So when you see central banks talking about these things, uh, low wage growth, um, inflation rates being low, which it is it's not a positive sign. And, um, and and that's essentially what we saw for Australian dollar as well. We didn't see, uh, we did see a quick jump up, but then all of that was retraced back. So overall though, um, they're saying that they're going to keep the interest rate low, interest rates low to support the uh, Australian economy. And um, they're just kind of going to keep it consistent for now and not changing anything. So these are some of the things that um, we have to pay attention to as more and more central banks um, announcements come out later this week. So today we had RBA and FOMC members speaking. So now we have the others as well later in the week. So just, just make sure those are the things we are looking for. Basically the state of the economy, what are the what's the employment um, and what, what are they looking in terms of looking at in terms of wage growth, inflation numbers, and what, are, what is their outlook for economic growth? So all of those things are things that we want to watch out for. <coughs> Excuse me, and how the central banks talk about these things will be very important as well. Um, in terms of the South Korea, oh, sorry, North Korea situation. Um, Right now, U.S. is basically selling weapons uh, weapons to Japan and South Korea. Um, I don't know how you know how good that action is, and they're also looking to put more um, sanctions on China as well as North Korea. So that's the stance right now. So it, at the moment, 
it is a risk off type of environment. That means we have Swiss franc and Japanese yen that are strengthening, which means all the crosses, all the different uh, currencies against those two would be going down, which means um, our dollars, uh, dollar Swiss, pound Swiss, uh, euro Swiss, all of those will be dropping as well as dollar yen, uh, dollar yen, Aussie yen, pound yen, all of these currencies will be are dropping as well. So that's the environment at the moment. So going into tomorrow, well, going into later today, we have GDP numbers that are still outstanding. They'll be coming out in a bit. And then uh, tomorrow morning, let's have a quick peek here. Okay, tomorrow morning we have um, not a whole lot of data out of, um, in the London session, but in, New York session, we have an active calendar. We have Bank of Canada. We have Canadian trade balance first and U.S. trade balance. Then we have Bank of Canada rate statement um, and overnight rate as well as non-manufacturing PMI numbers for the U.S. So again, anytime there's a central bank, um, expect volatility in the market. Again, those few things that we looked at are the same things that market will be looking at Bank of Canada for as well. And then we have uh, Australian data as well later in, the, later in the evening. So right now it looks like a lot of commodity currencies um, are expected to move tomorrow. So let's go on to the charts here. We'll start off with Euro US dollar. As we can see, uh, right now Euro is in this, this range. We came and tested the bottom of the range here where it was rejected on the left-hand side here, price stayed above this level, bounced off of this level, and now today's close was actually quite small. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, today's close was a pretty small, but um, overall, even though we have pins on both sides, uh, this is a bullish close. So we're looking for price to basically go upward. So one of the reasons um, euro is not as strong as it has been lately is because last week we had one of the um, one of the officials had come out and said that ECB is not going to tighten the mon monetary policy just yet. So that's why we are not seeing a big move in move up in euro. So keep that in mind. Overall, this looks bullish. So we're looking for price to move up. Um, it may not be a big move till ECB, um, ECB statement, which is coming down, I think on Thursday. So till then, we are still expecting price to move up. US dollar was hard hit as a result of the comments from Fed officials. So as a result, everything is bullish against euro dollar at the moment. So we're looking for this to move up higher. And the target here would be um, 1 1.1980 ish level uh, right above here about here that's the that's what we're looking for if we take a look higher uh, sorry at a lower time frame here as we can see price did bounce off very clearly of this uh, previous high here and acted as support so we're just looking for price to sort of go back higher so overall though euro is not that strong so if things were to turn um, euro is probably one of the currencies that would drop against the US dollar. So that's something to keep in mind. In terms of our pivot point, it is sitting above the pivot point. Very, very small move in euro for the day. Hasn't really done much. Um, we're just expecting it to kind of trickle back up. And once it gets into that 80 level, which is right about here, uh, we are going to look for some sort of a reaction at this level. But for now, it looks bullish, but not heavily bullish. Pound dollar, this is where um, where the big reaction for today was. Pound was very, very bullish uh, today. And part of it was probably related to Euro pound selling because when you're selling Euro against the pound, they're essentially buying the British pound, which would push the British pound up. But overall though, there's, there was really no real reason for British pound to be strong. There was some data that came out earlier in the UK session, which was services PMI number, which was in line with expectations. So there was nothing really that would drive pound up so much except for just the um, 
just the reaction in other currencies. So this is definitely bullish looking. So right now we are looking for a further move to the upside. The target here would be 130.80. That's the target, the next target to the upside. If it goes beyond that, then we are looking at about 130.100 for British pound. Aussie dollar here. Aussie dollar also had a bullish close for the day because uh, most of the pairs had bullish closes again the, against the US dollar because US dollar itself was weak. So right now we are looking for, based on the candle close here, we're looking for further bullishness in this. However, there is data coming out and if the data comes out negative, this could turn around. So in this case, we are looking for price to move up higher and the target, first target would be 80.30 and then we are looking for basically 80.80 or 80.70 here to the upside right about here. But do keep in mind now, Aussie will be coming back into this strong resistance, which means it could come back lower. So looking at a lower time frame, this is where we are. It is holding above this previous high. As long as it holds above the previous high, we are likely to see it go higher. New Zealand dollar. New Zealand dollar was very strong. Today it was even stronger um, than Aussie. So for the last little while, we've been seeing New Zealand dollar come down. So now we're finally seeing some bullishness into this. So this one, we're looking for a further move to the upside into 7,300 level here. So that will be the target. It could pull back first before it moves higher. So it could pull back into this level and then do another move to the upside. So the move that we could see in all of these, usually I'm looking for a pullback first. So this is the move that we are um, we're likely to see. This is the pivot point as well. So we would expect the price to um, pull back into the pivot point, stay above the pivot point, and then move up further. So overall, the direction, market direction in this case is, um, is up. Dollar Cat. Dollar Cat has enjoyed um, nice big big move here so it's still um dollar cad is bearish but overall so canadian dollar is bullish so what are we expecting here so in this case we are looking for price to continue lower so we do need to come out a little bit the target here is a 122.20 so this one we have to be very careful with because there is um, there is news coming out today, central bank. So let's put the first target at 123, 1.2300, this level. And then we are looking at 1.3150-ish level. So those will be the two target to the downside. And again, because there is central bank, Bank of Canada rate decision, this could have, that could have a big impact on this one. And in terms of our pullback, we may see a pullback into this 124.20 level and then uh, a further drop to the downside. So looking for a bearish move in this. Euro Swiss here. Euro Swiss has had a nice uh, bearish close. So we're looking for a further move to the downside here as well. We can remove the trend line, don't need it anymore. So we went into the top of the range here. Now we are pulling back. So this one, um, looking for a further move to the downside. So the target here would be 1.1300, or sorry, 1.1320 level first. So this is the, the next support and resistance level, looking for price to move lower in this one. So we're bearish on Euro Swiss franc. Pound Swiss franc is staying in a range right now. We could actually do this. Okay, so this is the range this has been in um, for now. So price is basically in an even narrower range. If we can do this, we are at the top of the range. So we're looking for price to move back lower into the bottom of the range. However, if the price does break out, then we are going to look for a move higher like this. So in that case, the target will go to 1.2520 ish level. Yeah, so what, that's where we'll be looking for the price to go to next. But for now, as long as the price stays within this range, then we are at the top of the range. We may look for a price um, coming to the bottom here. So I'm gonna treat this as a range bound market for now. 
pound yen, sorry, dollar yen. Dollar yen is bearish, looking for a further move to the downside. In this case, the target here will be right about here. So 94.92, so 0 0.9500 will be the first target to the downside. And then further down, we are looking at this level here, uh, 94.50-ish level. So overall, though, dollar Swiss franc is bearish. Um, in terms of pullback, let's take a look. Pullback. Uh, pullback, we may see a pullback into pivot point here. So this looks like a good pullback level around here. See how price reacted at this level and has reacted multiple times here. So pivot point looks like a good pullback level. If it pulls back higher, then we are looking at about that level, which is 9,600. So the first pullback level is 96, 95, 60-ish level, and then 9,600 up there. So I would, I'm gonna leave it at the first pullback level for now, right about here. Okay, pound yen, pound yen. Um, because pound has been very strong, pound yen has had a quite a move. We had a big move to the downside, then it pulled back up. Um, so it is still holding um, a bit of a bearish bias in it still. Um, so we're looking for further move to the downside in this. See how it's staying below here? So below the previous, uh, previous day's level. So it still has that bearishness in this. The target here will be just the bottom here. Uh, 141, 20 ish level. We're not looking for a big move unless something changes here. But uh, pound, because pound itself is very bullish at the moment. So this is having trouble keeping up with pound yen, is having trouble keeping up with other currencies, other yen crosses, which have moved quite a bit. So euro yen here, a nice move to the downside, very, very bearish close for the day. We, are, we have closed right into the previous low and looks like price wants to move further here. So here we are looking at 128.50 level for the next target to the downside. So this looks bearish. Aussie yen, Aussie yen is bearish as well, although it did pull back and close uh, slightly higher, but it still has with the two big pins on the upside, we are certainly, um, have that bearish bias in mind here. So next target here, is 86.35, so this will be the next one right about here, or even slightly lower into the 20 level. So let's say 86.28 here, so that will be the target to the downside, biases to the downside. Uh, New Zealand yen. New Zealand um, was another cross that I said was uh, quite bullish today. So as a result, um, New Zealand yen, had more bullishness in it. So this one closed quite neutral. We have big pin on the upside, another pin to the downside. So this closed neutral. So as a result of that, this will be considered a range bound trade. We have support and resistance at this level. It could get pushed up a little bit higher. So this is the this is the bit of the range for the last couple, uh, two or three days here. So at this point, if it gets into 79.00, looking for a potential sell. If it gets into 78.20, we're looking for a potential buy. So this will be a range bound type of move. Dollar yen, dollar was very, very weak today. As a result of that, um, we see a big uh, bearish candle here. And we are looking for a further move to the downside here. We are looking at 108, about 20 level will be the target to the downside. And then we're coming into important support and resistance level. So we'll have to see how price reacts at this level. But for now, we're looking for a follow through in dollar yen. Euro pound, this is um, one of the reasons pound dropped quite a bit here because there was selling in Euro pound. Euro has been weak and we are looking for further bearishness in this looking at one sorry 0 0.9085 level as the next target to the downside it could go a little bit lower into 90.60 level so overall it is bearish so see how we are making lower highs 
and lower lows here. So this is um, this is looking bearish still. Plus we have a, a big bearish engulfing candle, so that is certainly bearish. Euro Aussie here. Euro Aussie was also bearish, so we're looking for a further move to the upside, and this is where we are. So looking for move into 1.4790, so 1.4800 level. So bearish there, Aussie. Um, Janice, I always look for pullback before I, even when I don't mention it, I'm always looking for pullbacks before I look for price to drop further. So pound Aussie, um, oh, so one trick to use is look, I look for pullbacks into pivot points. So if it stays above the pivot point, then it's likely to go higher. If it stays below the pivot, daily pivot, then we're looking for price to move back lower. So this one here, it's been in this range for quite some time. And as a result, looking for price to move down. Well, this one, the candle close is bullish actually. So it could go either way. So if the price goes into the high here, 163.80. Um, so right now, because it's smack in the middle of the range, not the best pair to trade at the moment. So we need to see either price go into the high here, 1.6380 and reject that to come back down or go into the bottom here, 1.6180 level, and then reject that level to go up higher. So right now it's smack in the middle of the range. And once we see price um, approaching either of these two levels, that's when we are going to look for a trade in that one. Uh, pound cat has been bullish as well. It did come down into this support level. Sorry, um, bullish here. So looking for further move to the upside target here would be 1.6220 level. This one right here. Okay, so last one, CAD yen. CAD yen bearish, looking for a further move to the downside here. So we're looking for 8740-ish level or 8720 level. So that's what we're looking for, 87.20 for CAD yen. CAD yen is bearish as well. Now CAD does have data coming out tomorrow, Bank of Canada, so that will have an impact on all Canadian dollar crosses, so keep that in mind. Uh, that's all I have. Any questions or anything to add before we call it a wrap? Right, so it looks like no questions, perfect. All right, so you guys have a great evening and I will, um, I will see you tomorrow.